What is going on everybody? Welcome back to our uh, graphing financial data tutorial where we left off. We have this lovely looking chart coming up here. Um, it's not the most attractive visually, but it's a good looking chart for now. Um, and so now what we want to do, now that we've figured out how to plot the price data, we, are, we already have the volume data. So we might as well start plotting uh, the volume data that we have. So how do we do that? Um, so what we're going to go ahead and do here is add another axis, right? We've got one subplot here. Let's add another subplot. So to do that, uh, what we want to do is we're going to come down, I guess just here, and we'll say AX2 equals PLT dot subplot. And what we're going to have to do is change up the numbers. Like I was saying earlier, the numbers are basically like... Um, a square, right? So if you have like a one by one, right? There's only the option for one chart, right? But we want to have multiple charts. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to say this is a two by one. So there's one chart. Well, it's like, I guess it's like, you know, two vertical times one horizontal, I guess is the way to think about it. This is going to be number one. So you want to edit because like this originally says one by one by, you know, one by one and it's chart number one. Now it's two by one. This is still chart number one. This one's going to be a uh, two by one. Oops, two by one. But it's chart number two now, right? So um, the next thing we want to do is we're going to say um, for AX2, this is actually, you know, a volume chart. We could have a line, right? You could just draw like a line like we do um, with the open, high, low, close, right? It's like a line graph. But actually, most people do a bar graph, right, for uh, volume data. So let's go ahead and uh, conform to that, and we're going to do a bar chart. And so to do that, you just literally type in bar, right? And um, in within the bar, what are the things that we want to do? Well, we still want to use date, and then the other thing is volume. And again, we want that grid, so we'll do ax2.grid, and we're going to say true. We do want a grid. Now what we want to do is, um, so we're going to have two labels. So generally what you can do is like let us, we'll leave date for there. But now that we have two Y labels, we kind of need to like specify like which one is which. So here, you'll come here and you'll say plt.y label. And this Y label will again be stock price. But then down here, we're going to do a plt.y label, and this will be, so we'll remember this one, so it'll already have inputted it, and then we're going to just re-input a y label. It's kind of a hacky way to do it, but that's what we're going to do. Um, and that's this is the volume data. Now what we want to do is we are, we're happy with, um, oh, yeah, we'll get to that in a second. Um, Let's see. What we're going to want to do is, I guess, well, let me try. I think I think we can plot this now, and I'll show you where we stand at the moment so you can see the necessary changes. Okay, so when we plot this now, you see what we have, right? We've got this uh, volume data here, and it's actually blue if you can't tell, but, it, like, if we zoom in um, to the volume chart, you can see it's very, you know, it's blue. Um, but as you can see, there's a few problems. One problem is this isn't showing date, right? So we obviously have to convert this to date. This stuff is quite ugly. Um, and then also, like, let's say we want to zoom into like this area here on stock price. Volume didn't change, like, right? So we'd have to like perfectly match it up ourselves, right? And like, kind of the point of programming is to automate a lot of stuff and make life easy. So how can we make life easy? Well, turns out it's you know fairly simple to do. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to close out of here. And what we first thing that we want to do is for this, we're going to say share axis or share x, share x. And who do we want to share x with? With axis one. This way, when we save that and run it again, first of all, it gives us the converted. Um, dates even though again like it's really hard to see it right now if we stretch it out you can see like the full date 
Um, let me put it back on the window. Um, but what it's going to do that's special is if we zoom into right here, now this automatically zooms in. And like we're like, oh, what happened on this day where it was really high volume? And we zoom in on the high volume point, right? The stock price stuff zooms in as well. So it's all, you know, identical. Same thing, like let's say you do this and you're like, oh, I want to scoot over a little bit. You can pull it and like now everything is like the x-axis is shared between these two uh, bits of data. So obviously that's very, very useful. Now the next thing that we want to do is um, for the label here, instead of AX1, one thing we can do with AX1 to kind of cheat is do this and make it a 90 degree. And then for label, just copy that, paste it. And for label in AX2, um, and then change this to 45. Now when we save that and run it, um, it's kind of cleaned up this data. It's still kind of showing, but we can kind of, we'll, we'll continue going through what we can do about that data. Um, but for now, um, it looks at least a little better and we can actually see this data information. And we still obviously have the same scroll ability where they're shared and you know, zoom ability and all this good stuff. So um, continuing on, we'll close out of that. Um, the next thing, let's see if there's anything else I want to do in this specific video. Um, yeah, I think that I think we'll cut off the video here. But the next thing that we really need to do is if you've ever if you ever like look at a chart besides, you know, fix this stuff, <laughs> we'll get to that. Uh, if you ever like look at a chart and um, it's got like price and volume. Like there's no reason. Um, first of all, we don't need these numbers at all on volume. Very rarely do you actually have like number stuff on that um, Y axis on a volume chart. Um, so we can get rid of that. We can still leave, you know, the label of volume. That's a good idea. So we want to get rid of those, but also you'll notice a lot of times that the actual volume chart is very small you know like it's like maybe a third of of the size of this current volume chart and then the stock chart is like much larger um because really volume is more for like a reference and it's like a, something you just quickly glance at right so it's not something you need to look really have like a lot of detail so um so in the next video what we're going to do is make um how, how to figure out how to make this chart a little bit um smaller uh, and so, yeah, so that's what we'll be getting into in the next video, and then also getting rid of some of this data, just kind of cleaning up this chart a little bit. But as you can see, it's starting to evolve into a, a, you know, a respectable financial graph. So um, stay tuned to the next video. As always, thank you for watching. Thanks for your support, your subscriptions, and until next time.